Hello. So, welcome to today's Guitar Club. So, um, yeah, I just thought I'd do a quick live stream today because, um, well, I haven't really done much in the ways of content so far this year. And I've been really wanting to do some more of these live streams. So, I've been working on my live stream setup um, and making some changes to it. So, you'll find there might be some differences in um, the way these live streams look. And... Basically, I just want to have a little chat, and if anyone wants to ask any questions, um, feel free. I'm checking the comments as we go, and I will answer any questions that you might have. But I just want to have a talk to you about a few things today, just um, to go over some things about the channel and the future, and all that kind of stuff. So, first of all, um, you might notice I've changed a few things in this room. In fact, I'm just going to turn this lamp on, because I think it looks pretty cool. So... Um, there are, like I say, a few things I want to talk to you about in today's uh, live stream, just about the content and things like that that I'm thinking about changing, and just so you can see what's happening with the um, the channel this year. So the first thing that I want to talk about is actually just that: it's the content. So I'm going to come onto this in a bit more detail later on. Um, but essentially, the idea that I'm having at the moment this year is I'm going to be making the videos shorter. I have been putting up some posts, um, asking about you, what you guys want to see and things like that. And um, I am thinking about making the video shorter because I just feel like that's one of the things that I think is going to be quite a nice touch um, to the channel. Um, and a lot of the content ideas I'm having are not set in stone. I am going to adapt things as I go, as always, as we always do with these kind of, um, with the channel. So, um, first of all, I'm wanting to make content all based around um, helping people to be more creative and writing their own music. And that's what a lot of the things that I do on this channel are about anyway. It's about, sorry about uh, trying to help you be more creative and that's what the in the style of videos and things like that are all about so you can learn about things so you can take things away and put them into your own plane so i'm on about making some more videos this year just designed to help people come up with new ideas and new ways of thinking of things to help them to be a bit more creative um the in the style of videos are going to be staying because um, I really do love making those videos and it seems to be the ones that people do want to see on this channel as well. So the In The Style videos are staying, but I'm thinking about doing them as a series. So rather than trying to commit to always bringing out an In The Style video every week or every month, I'm thinking about doing them like um, making like maybe a five or six part series. And then I can have a few weeks off where I... Um, you know write and research and do these videos and then when they come out uh, they'll come out in a, a series format so they'll be like once it one episode might be about i don't know Coldplay. next episode might be about stone roses you know you know you just go like that basically um so that's essentially the ideas with content but i want to come a bit come to that a little bit more um later on and um the other thing that i'm going to start doing is um I want to start doing more of these live streams so I can make shorter videos and if people want to learn a bit more about the subject that I've discussed in a video, I can then go through that topic in a bit more detail in the live stream. So um, on that vein, I'm going to discuss this last week's video, the one that I released last week. It was only a short video and it was just a test really to see if this shorter video format works. So. I am going to just go through what I went through. So if you saw that video, it was all about um, um, movable chord shapes. A really simple idea about how to take standard chords that you might have been playing since day one of playing guitar. And just using, using those shapes and using them in a bit of a different way. So um, let me have a quick um, look at this. So let me grab my guitar. Let's actually start playing guitar um, on my trusty Ibanez AS73, I think it is, today. So, and like I said before, I'm, I'm trying out a new um, a new setup for my um, live streams. Everything's a bit different. So hopefully, 
I say hopefully you can hear this guitar, but I actually don't think you can. Just give me a second. Hmm, very peculiar. Very, very, very peculiar. Uh, I know what this is. I didn't have the guitar turned on. I'm very sorry about that. I say all this setup stuff is still quite new to me, so just get a clean guitar sound. So yeah, I'm just going to go briefly through this idea that I was going through in the um, video that I released last week. So I said the idea was movable car chips. And if you never experiment with this kind of idea before, it really is a beautiful idea. And very simple, very, very simple. Um, so let me just bring you up onto this screen here. So in the um, video last week, it was basically all around this... Um... Hi, Ishan. Nice to see you there, pal. So the idea was basically just this idea. E major chord shape. Move it around. I just want to give you a quick... Um overview of that so the whole idea is a very simple idea any card shape that you already have that you have learned you can use and just experiment and this is the old point of what I, what I like about making these videos it's all about experimenting and being creative so say this a minor chord let's move it around quite like that chip I don't like that one that's quite nice See, it's so easy to just make up new guitar parts. So easy. Um, T chord. That's a classic change. I believe there's a REM song that does that. Um, this ship I really like down here. Sounds great. So essentially that was the idea, is I just wanted to go through a bit of that. And um, <clears throat> any chord shape, you know, D major, move it around. There's nice. Don't like that one. That's very nice. And again, this is all about using your ears. Plain and simple, use your ears. And um, you can make up music very simply just using these standard shapes that you've learned from day one. If I had to hit upon an example there really really early on, is um, Neil Young, use this all the time, look at Rocky and Three Wheels. That's just an all E minor to an A major shape, the seventh fret, and at the fifth fret. So, yeah, basically that's the idea. I mean, this is a very simple idea in the video that I made the last week was a very simple concept. So the idea was basically just that is taking standard chord shapes and moving them around. So there's not much else to really talk about on that unless anyone has any questions about anything. Um, so, um, oh, I didn't actually say I'm not going to be on live uh, for very long because the baby is asleep just beneath me. So be, well, not beneath, being in the room lower than this. So I'm um, obviously going to go off and take over dad duties very soon. But there's a few things here. Um, oh, one second. Uh, let me try out this new screen I've got here. See, see what it says. I've got these cool new screens that I'm trying. So... Um, show you this. How cool is this? I have um, a live chat screen, so I can brings up the chats as they come in. So, um, Don Incognito, was that Neil Young a D to a C triad? It really was, yes. It's just a normal E, made, um, e minor chord to start with. And then when we go down to um, this ship, one second, so you can see it. Here we go. So when you go down to this ship, that is just a D major triad. That's exactly right. You're just taking apart this D major bar chord, just playing these three strings of it. Move it back. C triad. So you, you you're spot on there. Don't absolutely spot on. So E minor. 
proper cool. You know, Neil Young was just just great. You know, he's 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 had um really nice. You know, it's a lot of people think he was very he played very simple stuff, and he does, but it's just so creative, and his rhythm playing in particular is just absolutely phenomenal. And, um, and like I say, if anyone does have any questions or anything, then it does actually bring it up on the screen, which is just a new little thing I'm trying out. Um, you're right, it, it, Neil is great. I mean, um, I, to be honest, I haven't listened to loads of Neil Young, but um, is it Harvest Harvest Moon, the album? <laughs> I hope I haven't got that wrong. Um, fantastic album. Um, I remember there was um, a live performance of Old Man, and I just love that, you know, that... Um... never really learned this before but um, I believe it's just that to that and again that is a prime example of that movable chord shape you know it's just a D sus2 kind of shape moved up and um, obviously it changes the type of chord it is um, uh, I really can't be bothered working out what the chord name is right now unless you really want me to work it out but then it just goes back to this D major absolutely spot on really nice and um, yeah, so simple enough idea. So yeah, let's um, move on. Um, I was thinking at some points I might just have a little jam as well, because um, it's very rare I get to just practice and play guitar and jam around. So I am thinking about just having a bit of a jam as well. So I hope that you know people don't mind that. I um, I'm really big into improvising. It's something that I like to do quite a lot. So. I'm just going to have a little bit of a jam now, and if anyone has any questions, then feel free, and then I'm going to move on to the next topic I want to talk to, talk about. So, um, let's have a look. So, um, I'm sure a lot of people are very aware of um, elevated jam tracks. This guy releases jam tracks on a daily basis. I can't believe that he manages to do that. It's insane. And sometimes I just like to put on a backing track and play along, so I'm not really practicing as such now, but... I put on one of his backing tracks. I'm just going to have a noodle around basically and just do what I do and um, see if I can um, practice a few things basically. Okay, so. So this backing track is in C sharp minor, it says. Now there's certain processes I go through when I'm improvising. So first of all, I'll just have a little listen to the track. Hopefully you can hear that okay. And my guitar okay. Seems to work alright. Right, yep, seems to be alright. I'm I can hear things okay, so hopefully you guys can as well. Um yeah, now when I'm improvising one of the things that I like to do first is I try and find themes that I can build upon and it kind of glues things together so I'm not just noodling around, you know. Sometimes uh, people, students come to me all the time with this kind of idea that they'll put a backing track on and they'll just play. And they always say like, why does my solo always sound the same? And this is, the thing is, if you want your solo to really be truly improvised, you need to implement those licks and things that you always play, but around ideas and cr creative concepts that you come up with on the fly. And sometimes to practice that, I will noodle around, but mainly come up with ideas that I can build upon and use as the basis of my improvisation, my solo. So. That's a good theme already, that.
time, definitely not. Uh, okay, let's have a butchers. So. <clears throat> He really does great, make great tracks. So let's have a look. What else are we going to be having a quick look at? So the other thing that I want to just go through is just a brief um, history of this channel, which is going to lead on to me talking about what content I'm thinking about making for this uh, coming year. So um, many people might know already if you look at the channel history and the videos that I've released before and especially the most popular videos that are on this channel this channel was originally set up to be um, a kids guitar lesson channel um, I was doing a lot of um, teaching in schools at the time and um, mainly like after school clubs and things like that and I found that I was teaching the same kind of lessons every every week to these kids and I personally found that when teaching kids, so I'll try to keep this quite brief, I don't want to bore you with all this stuff. When teaching kids, I find using the standard method of teaching kids how to play guitar, as in through the method books and things like that. Uh, see you later, Don. Nice to see you, pal. So, when I was... Um, <clears throat> Yeah, when I was teaching these kids, I found that playing, doing the standard things of like teaching people the music on the, the kids, the music on the stave, and going through all these kind of um, standard approach, you know, your, your, your rhythmic notation and things like that. Um, kids got bored and I didn't really get results. And I found that doing that with one to one students, if they're doing grades and stuff, works really well. But when you've got kids who have quite a short attention span and you're trying to teach them to not just learn how to play the guitar, but actually be interested in the guitar as well, um, it can get a bit hard to get them to actually practice and to get stuff out of it. So I'd find, especially with these after-school clubs, that a lot of times the kids would come away from it without actually learning much, which I suppose also says something about me as a teacher, I suppose, as well. But when you've got kids that are just there because their friends are there, that kind of thing, it's really hard to get results. So I found that the best thing I could do was to teach them songs that were current and things that they actually would be excited about playing even if they didn't end up taking up the guitar properly, just having something that they recognise, like teaching a kid how to play Shape of You, um, Ed Sheeran, is something they will take away and it'll give them an interest in it. So one day they might take up the guitar properly, one day they might not, but either way they've learned something that they can do and they know and they've heard before. And that always excited me more than just teaching kids how to play Twinkle Twinkle by reading music. So the idea of this channel was during the summer holidays, I put all of these lessons that I put together for these kids and I made some videos around them, put them up on this channel and went to see, uh, just to see how they did. And to be honest, some of them did really well, like really did all right. Like I think my um, um, Old Town Road video, I think it's come up to 80,000 views and Baby Shark's got about 50,000 small hours, which is pretty good. It was very good. In fact, it's amazing. Um, but what happened then was the uh, copper laws came in, so the child um, protection laws with YouTube. And to be honest, I didn't know whether my videos were going to get pushed um, towards people, if they were going to get views, if they were going to be taken down. I didn't have a clue about anything. Um, and at the time, I only had 100 subscribers. So I decided instead of risking the fact that, that you know all that work I'd done would be gone, I thought I'll change the the idea of the channel to be more of a, um, a creativity based thing. So I made this channel into what it is now, and I started releasing the main ones is the in the style of videos, and they are ones that I think have been pretty well received, especially the Oasis one. Um, that one's done really quite well, so I'm going to be keeping up with that kind of idea and that kind of content. So that brings me back onto the content of this channel so throughout this time since i've changed from being a kids channel to be more of just a creativity based educational stuff um i've tried to experiment with the content quite a lot to find out what you guys like and what you guys want to see and it seems like the um analysis of artists and bands is definitely what you guys seem to want to see from this channel I've tried experimenting with her making some other types of stuff and Endeavour does as well. So 
that brings me on to, like I said, the In The Style of videos are going to continue, but I can't really, especially now we've got a kid and everything, we've got a baby, it's hard for me to sit down and to pump as much effort into making those videos. Um, and I don't mean the editing. People always say, like, you know, maybe don't do as much editing. The editing isn't the thing that takes the time. It's the research and the scripting and the making of the tracks and the backing tracks and, and the filming and stuff. So... Like I say, rather than making tons of those videos and putting loads of hours into those, I'm going to be doing them as a series, like I mentioned before, and trying to do like five or six part series. And then I can take a few weeks off or a month or two off uh, where I just research them and start putting them together. But um, on the same lines, and this is what I've been thinking about a lot over this last, um, last few weeks, is... Um, keeping up with the concept of the analysis videos that you guys seem to like, um, I've been thinking about making these same style videos but in more of a song related format. So the exact same kind of concept of taking a band and seeing what we can take from the way that they play and the way they write music and um, making some music around that and giving some ideas that you can take away to create your own music. I'm thinking about making those in more of a song format. So, uh, for example, I've started to put down um, some ideas around uh, James Bay, for example. So, um, just to give you an overview of what I'm thinking is, James Bay likes to use these... <coughs> let me just turn my distortion off on my guitar. Okay. For example, James Bay likes to use... Um, playing, I suppose what we could call tenth intervals, where we take a root note and the third of the chord. So if I take this chord shape, this A major chord shape, but if I take just these two notes, major shape, make that into a minor, you just take that finger off. So that means that's a minor shape. And that's how James Bay likes to play, is he likes to make chord progressions that go around like that. So like. That kind of idea and I figured why don't I make these um, kind of in the style of videos but more with songs rather than bands and full albums and artists and all this so I decided I'd take a couple of like a James Bay song and break down some of the things he likes to use and then I take some of those ideas to make something new out of it Um, I was thinking about the idea of, like, say, for example, um, Champagne Supernova, the song, Oasis song, classic. Um, the idea of that song is a simple song, but the idea is basically just taking a normal chord, changing the bass notes. So I thought I'd make some videos, uh, a video about that idea. So I'm not taking the Oasis song and learning it or anything, but we're taking an idea from it and see what we can do with it. So, for example, I suppose I could use a B minor chord, change the bass note. I really like that kind of idea. So I figured it'd be um, they'd be a bit easier to make. They providing the same kind of um, informational um, content and value and ideas, but they um, they don't require as much effort. I don't like to say that because I don't like to make it seem like I don't put effort in. I always put effort into everything I do, but it gives me um, a bit more scope for not having to spend as much time, I can just listen to one song, analyse one song, come with ideas from that one song and then make up something and teach a concept from that one song rather than an entire album or an entire back catalogue of music for um, from an artist. For example, the uh, Ed Sheeran video. That one um, is actually one of my favourite ones I've done. I really enjoyed that video. I enjoyed making it. I think the informational content in that video is really good. Um, but that really did take a long time to put together. So, um, yeah, so that's the idea with that. I'm also thinking about coming up with some more ideas like I did with last week's with the... Um, oh. 
movable car shape, like just coming with some ideas that can help you with certain aspects of your play and that kind of thing. And um, that's essentially the 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 um, the things that I'm thinking about doing this year. Now these are not all set in stone because um, one thing that YouTube in particular has taught me is you cannot really commit to one particular idea because if it doesn't work and people don't really want to see that idea then you develop it and you change and that's what that's why I want to tell you a little bit about my story of how the channel started because that's the whole thing really is you adapt and you change things as you go because essentially with this channel isn't really about me it's about what I can help you guys with you know is the idea is if you guys like to see a particular type of content and it comes up in my analytics and the views and things saying that you got into you like that content then I want to make stuff like it so um, the things that I've done recently that I really like and I think that you guys like too is definitely in the style of videos that Oasis video has gone really well and the whole idea behind that video of um, taking some common things that Noel does and then um, um, uh, trying to show you what he's doing there so you can apply that to your own guitar playing and hopefully improve your songwriting is what I want to do, you know. So, again, if you do have any questions, just let me know. Um, if you're watching this after the um, after the live stream, uh, leave comments in the comment section and I'll address them as well. Um, but like I say, that's the other thing as well is uh, I'm wanting to make more live videos this year doing more of these live streams as you can probably tell from watching this i don't feel overly comfortable doing them but i do really enjoy doing them um they're a bit longer um, format and um the idea that i want with these live streams i'm not sure when i'm going to be doing them i'm thinking about trying to schedule an actual time that they're going to happen every week or every fortnight um but the idea is is um i like the idea of being able to talk to you guys like you know if you have any questions I can answer them if um, you know the whole point is is like it's I was like I want to make this into a proper club you know be a community you know I want you guys to start to know each other and get to know each other a bit in the comment sections and help each other out maybe check out each other's stuff I want to check out your music I want to find out what you guys like and what you guys want to listen to what you guys want to learn about and I say make it into a bit of a community. I really like that idea of making this into a community. So, um, obviously, if you have anyone has any questions, then just let me know and we'll go through it. But right now, I'm just going to have a little bit of a jam again. I'm going to try and find some more backing tracks to play along with and just have a bit of fun. Um, and just, um, yeah, I'm just going to talk some random bollocks, really. That's all I've seen to have been doing, so... This is the other cool thing about what I've done with the room recently is I've set up my... Um, pedal board again which I haven't had set up for a while and um, I've got my loop pedal plugged in which is yes I love having this loop pedal because it's a great teaching tool because of the way the world is right now um, all my lessons that I teach individually are all being done by a zoom and skype so um, actually having a loop pedal here if I'm teaching let's say lead guitar I can I can loop up a quick backing track and then play along you know it's awesome so let's uh i'm just gonna make a little loop just for fun you know like i say it's very rare i get to practice these days so let's have a go <laughs> Thank you. 
also nice to be able to play loops and make loops up like this. So I'm going to back in track again. Let's see if I can find something else on this um, Elevator Jam Tracks site. If you guys don't know Elevator Jam Tracks, then you need to check it out. It is really fun to play along with his backing tracks. Soulful Mellow Groove in G. So it's a major backing track, which means it should sound a little bit happier. actually makes up now.
track just for the fun of it. And um thanks for the guys who uh if you guys that have been watching it's really kind. I think there's um a few people and I say this to be honest with is more of a test live stream video. I'm gonna watch it back later and make sure the audio's okay. So obviously let me know if there's any problems with the audio or with the video or anything. Um but I think it's working okay. Let's have a little try of this one. Sorry, let's just make sure there's no adverts coming up before it because I don't like that. Okay.
So it's strange. When you don't play guitar much, like I don't really get to play much these days, to be honest. It always feels weird when you're playing it. And you feel like you're not anywhere near the level you should be. Oh. Hurt my finger a bit doing that. Okay, so thanks very much for watching, guys. I'm going to leave you to it now. Um, I said, any questions about anything? Let me know, and uh, the next live streams I do will probably be a bit more focused around particular topics that have been covered in videos. Um, and obviously, if you like the idea that I've been saying about um, making videos around songs, um, I say it's in the style videos, but in the around songs, let me know if there's any songs you want to see covered in those uh, videos. And when I do the live streams, hopefully they'll be a bit more focused around what those lessons are based upon uh, or built around. And then we can go from there, really, and see what you guys like. And as always, I'm going to be kit to, um, making the videos to be things that you guys want to see. So thanks very much, guys. I'll see you in the next video.